Hey all. <laughs> hey guys. What's up? Do you see the what I have on my screen? Where we are choosing a life path, right? <laughs> By the way, um, the the timer was borked on purpose. I mean, it wasn't on the purpose, but uh, it just got borked uh, somehow. I mean, uh, yeah. I I promise when I was testing it, <laughs> it was all fine. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, I just yeah, I love that. I love that um, me menu uh, music though. So I hope you will like it too. You know, I'm really grateful, actually, <laughs> that Corporal Riot, I like that, okay. I'm really grateful, guys, that you're here, uh, to be honest. Um, okay, um, thing is, I will, I will switch to, you know, to the game in a moment. I just wanted to do... <laughs> I just... Jesus, the chat. I just wanted to... Um, I just wanted to do the shout for our moderators, actually, uh, because, we, you know, we have like lots of reds uh, right now on chat, uh, but there's like few amazing people that are helping um, and you know them, all of them. Uh, it's Amelia. So Lilaya, she is streaming World of Warcraft. And if you want to check her out, she's in my recommended streamers. Um, we have Io with us and she is streaming um, Destiny 2, you can also check her out uh, in the featured content. She's our moderator. Uh, and um, on top of... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see that Ayano got... Since is sending hearts. Yeah, exactly. We have, um, I don't know, Shell uh, from Red. We have, uh, we have, of course, you know, Miles. Uh, with us as well. So there's a ton of people. I saw Patrick here. I know that some cinematic designers are watching. Uh, so there is, there's like a ton of people that actually came over uh, to just um, enjoy, you know, the time, the time together. My, my Samuel necklace. I don't have a Samuel necklace. Actually, I'm just wearing like a, um, like a string of silver that I have with me just for vampires. So yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, from our moderators, we have we have a few more people I wanted to mention. There's Maciek um, uh, Repek, who's our community manager as well. And uh, I think I didn't mention Alicia yet. And she is our community manager from, um, from Gwent. You can find her also in the featured streamers. So yeah, uh, they're all together there. Yep, that's Alicia, exactly, uh, on the chat. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. Um, uh, that is perfect. Okay, guys, so uh, one thing I have tweeted uh, like not so long time ago uh, that I'm just waiting for people to pick the life path for us. Uh, so this is what we are going to do. I'm going to pick the life path that um, people will pick and I'm just checking the results right now. If you go to my Twitter, you already voted. Perfect. That's very good. I'm just checking and Nomad is 38 right now. So it seems we are going to be playing Nomad unless you're disappointed with that choice. Uh, so that's this is what we, what we are going to be playing most likely. Um, so I'm just I'm just waiting for the poll to pull to end. It's two more minutes. Um, <laughs> yeah, Nomad is the shit. I like that. That's a very um, that's that's a good definition. Like, I like this. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, actually, and if there's more reds actually in chat, like, guys, please um, write, you know, uh, because I, I think everybody would, would love to know uh, that, you're, that you're there um, so that, you know, we can just enjoy this time together. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, well, I mean, you know, uh, we'll see. We'll see um, how the, how it, I, I see the question that everybody does know, Matt. I mean, we will see, like, at first I wanted to do what majority of people will pick and then we'll see. Um, maybe we'll switch uh, at some point. I wanted to go with a, a let's say, democratic vote, vote uh, first. By the way, um, by the way, uh, there was one thought I wanted to share, and I of course forgot. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm I'm getting old. By the way, um, <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yes, uh, that I wanted to mention that the the pool is closing in one minute. Uh, Bartek wrote, or Berek actually. In two weeks, I'm ending my education. I'm going to apply for Quest Design position in CD Projekt Red. Cheer for me, please. Well, I mean, I'm checking that, <laughs> that application. So, you know, I mean, uh, I am holding my thumbs for you. You know, it's the, uh, the recruitment process to our studio in general is kind of, how to call it, uh, complex and difficult. Um, but, you know, I mean, everybody started somewhere, to be honest, you know, uh, 
like I'm, I'm 10 years in red right now uh you know it, it wasn't easy i think they rejected me five or six times if i remember correctly um this is how long it <laughs> so they're like who the fuck is this dude like get the hell out of here so <laughs> yeah but i'm very um what to call it um i i do not give up so you know i didn't give up <laughs> yeah, Lilaya, exactly. Him again. Yep, that was probably the reaction when they saw my uh, CV. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Five times is how long? Well, I mean, uh, it was like I applied five times every half a year, I think. So it's been, I think, four or five years that I tried. Because um, I'm in the industry like... Um, I mean, industry is 16 years right now, right? Since I was 19, so because I'm 45 right now. And I'm 10 years in the in red. I've been doing like lots of like smaller indie games and so on and, and, and so on before I moved to AAA somewhere like 12, 13 years ago. Yeah. So that was, that was my story, you know? That was my story. Anyway, I think that actually the pool should be closed. Uh, I, I mean, uh, unless it didn't, but I, I just... Uh, I just hope it did. Uh, let me check. Let me check. Uh, so I'm just looking at my phone. Okay, the choice is Nomad. 37%. Okay? Choice is Nomad 37. <laughs> well, okay, I'm not commending the, the, the game with Geralt with number four uh, attached to it, by the way. Um, because it appeared in the chat. I have not, I have no idea what you're talking about. Never heard of it. Um <laughs> Yeah, I'm 35, not 45, though. But I would like to, you know, um, look young and, and be 40, 45. Okay, let's play. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm switching I'm switching to the to the mode where we can actually see the game. Right, I think that actually this one is better uh, for this choice. Let's do this. So, at this point, we will be starting. Uh, I see that there are some questions. Um, I have a question if I want to start an internship. But a few weeks ago, you probably signed someone, and right now it's only junior position three. Is it possible to apply? Uh, to be honest, do not get discouraged ever when you don't see the position not opened in any game dev studio. To be honest, like most of the game dev studios, especially the good studios, are hiring all the time. So that means that if you send the application and they really like understand, you know, how to build a, a good, well-functioning team. Uh, they will consider your application anyway, and they will create a position for you. Sometimes, of course, there are some circumstances that it's not possible and whatnot, but don't bother with it, to be honest. Like, uh, I mean, honestly, I was just ignoring that stuff. I just wanted to get in, so I just kept on applying until they, they were too tired of me applying, so they decided to give me a chance. You know, so here you go. So don't be bothered with it. Um, actually, what's important is your skill set, you know? Like, if you, if anybody who's like excellent, comes to us and says, hey, I want to work with you. We are like, dude or girl, obviously we want to work with you because you're so amazing that we want to have you in our team. So really, I mean, the fact, you know, if it's opened, not opened, okay, sure, I understand there are circumstances that maybe sometimes, um, you know, uh, it, it, it makes, it, it matters, right? That the positions are not opened, uh, I, I know that, but majority of big studios do hire all the time. You know, if you look at our uh, page, I think we have 90 openings, if I remember correctly, like nine zero, you know, that's shit ton of this. So anyway, um, any pre-read indie games I'm proud of that you can mention? Um, actually, that's that's a very good question. You know, when you're a game dev, you, you need to get used to the fact that a lot of games that you will be doing or you're doing will be deleted <laughs> and you won't make it. And they, they, they won't be made. So basically everything that I worked on for four years of my career, for four years, haven't been released. Including like bigger games like uh, they, for instance, the shooter that Metropolis Software has been doing. Um, because I was part of that team before I moved to Reality Pump to Krakow, where we did uh, Two Worlds games and expansions. Okay, I think we should, you know, like move on with the game. I like you. I I'm glad you guys like the ambient music. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, the, so the thing is, this first stream, it will be two hours. I would, this is the thing that I wanted to mention to you, but I'm too old and I start forgetting stuff. So uh, <laughs> what I wanted to say, this stream will be like around two hours. We'll wrap it up around 10 p.m. Uh, uh, CST, so basically Polish time. But uh, next time, if everything goes fine, uh, I'll be here with a bit more. Uh, so hopefully we can do this really regularly and I would love to actually bring more reds in uh, because I know that there's amazing people that we can actually um, stream together and actually talk together to you about the game and so on so that we can all learn and uh, but this is all future plans uh, let's let's not talk about it yet um, after this stream uh, we will see how it goes and you know you can always see it on my Twitter so I'll keep you informed liquid wolf hi how many times I played cyberpunk I mean pfft. I played it four and a half years time every day, all the time. So it's kind of hard to count <laughs> how many times. How many times I finished it from beginning till the end? I don't think I can even say that I finished it once, starting from very beginning till the very end on the safe save on the on the same save. Uh, so I would love to actually do it right now with you. Okay, let's, yes, let's jump in. I think that is a healthy thing to do, because too much talking, it will be boring. Don't you prefer controller? I do prefer, actually, controller, but it's easier for me to look at the Twitch studio and streaming using keyboard and mouse. I will be switching controller sometimes. Thankfully, in Cyberpunk, it works well, that you can switch between those two, and it goes well. My favorite quest in Cyberpunk. Um, I think that my favorite quest will be the um sinner man probably um whole judy storyline is incredible i really like that um so uh, i uh those are probably quests that i like the most but to be completely honest it, we wouldn't really have uh you know that certain thing in the game at all if you know if um i wouldn't like it you know me or directors or like quest director and so on if we wouldn't like it it wouldn't be in the game you know uh so <laughs> that's basically it so if it landed in the game to be honest we most likely like that um but yeah i mean there's so many quests that i touch certain specific things you know and i won't mention of course the quest i worked on as you see we'll go i think with female first um because uh i really i really like um our female vo voice actress uh she's uh sorry I'm V. So. I'm V. I'm V. Yeah, exactly. I really like her. Now, um, I really like to play with like darker skin tone, actually. Uh, that's probably my main, most favorite one. So I'll go with this one. Um, skin type. Okay. Uh, let's. Okay. Like, uh, so I will guys show you like my most favorite uh, hairstyle uh, in the game. Uh, not this one. <laughs> okay, that's not this one. <laughs> Uh, this one is, uh, yeah, I mean, it's decent hairstyle, you know, not having against, like, um, <laughs> not, not having anything against uh, that kind of uh, hairstyle. But this is the, like, for me, the most absolute best hairstyle in a whole game, which is this one. I absolutely love this. I mean, just our um, character artists who are, like, specialized in hair, they just did, like, a fucking God's work just putting this together like check it out like it's amazing i mean uh, honestly i just love this hairstyle so um that's why i picked that one but um and now um what kind of a uh, ooh, that is, that is really cool somehow i went instantly into pink maybe blue i mean i'm looking at the blue um but the blue is um it is kind of uh, hmm. I'm just I'm feeling it maybe like too stark contrast to the skin tone um, for me uh, for my personal preference. I think I like this one slightly more. Um, like we could try like those more crazy ones because I, I guess I'm not gonna play like a, like a, just a standard one. I would say I'm feeling this to be honest. Uh, yeah, I'm really really uh, 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 I really. Uh, <laughs> one of uh, one of my friends, by the way, uh, she just messaged me saying that she did a dangles for this hair. Do you guys know what dangles are? Dangles are basically, technically speaking, everything um, 
on the appearance of the character that if you move the character and then like certain element on the character moves. And I'm not talking about penis right now. Uh, have that in mind. I I'm talking about actual dangles, like strings, you know, like pieces of hair, you know, things like that, like add-ons on the characters. This, those, those, those things are called dangles in the industry. At least this is how we call it. Uh, it's funny. So, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. Anyway, uh, let, let's move on. Let's move on because I'm just getting. Um, you you can't wait for a new content to come out. Okay, cool. <laughs> no comment regarding this. Uh, um, there are many points throughout the story. Simka downsized the significance due to time or second ending network. Mm -hmm. Is there any chance that some such branches main story can be beefed up where where appropriate? Overall, good job with the story. I mean, uh, f first of all, thank you for the thank you for the compliment about good good job with the story. You know, it's obviously a work of many many uh, people working actually you know together to pull that story off uh so it's um you know it's it's basically our writers our quest designers our cinematic designers who build those beautiful scenes you can see in the game our open world team all of those teams are actually building the narrative but then you know all the all other departments like art specifically even ui and and post and music you know like our composers it all comes together um as a narrative and uh, uh, I know that some of you are actually asking sometimes, you know, about stuff like, okay, you know, because it was just mentioned, the comment that I read, you know, that that um, some things felt too short for you and so on. You know, the thing is that the production reality is for us that when you're like, people, uh, you know, preparing and uh, preparing the game and uh, really like trying to just make sure that it's as best as it can be, uh, we always need to pay attention to things like, okay, you know, how... Um, how much budget we can spend, how much time we can spend on this on this thing. And believe me, like a version of Cyberpunk where content is actually like the highest quality, and I'm here talking about like narrative content, like quests and story and all that and scenes. This is the most important for us. So every time when you're actually like playing like a quest or something, I want to make sure that you will be uh, given a quality entertainment and that you will get like a value for your time, basically. So that's why very often during a production, and I'm not talking about production of Cyberpunk here specifically, but just all the games, like I did eight games or seven, I'm not really sure, I didn't count recently, but I think eight games. And just every possible situation is always like this, that you have to um, make sure that the content you're planning to do for the game is reasonable, that you're actually doing it for the budget you have, and budget being like, let's say, five years of production right because you guys don't want to wait 10 years for for a next game right and so on so th that's the, that's the thing um we want to make sure that uh the you know the content that you have in the game is good is good quality enough and th thing is that you know sometimes basically it results with situations like when we just play it and we're like okay this is way too much we would have to like prolong the production who know how long actually to just like have it w done well and in the same time, I wanted to point out something important. You don't want your content to be diluted too much. You don't want like situation when, okay, like some threads, you know, and so on are prolonged too much. You know, some things are dragged too much because it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel good, you know, to play this. And I just, I just wanted to um, make sure you, you, you guys understand, like all, all the choices we make actually with like, okay, what gets into the game, what, what doesn't, you know, what we will actually, um, you know, what will be actually um, uh, possibly like simplified or reduced or what should be prolonged, what should be expanded. We always try to pay attention to what really works for uh, that a given, um, for that, for, for that given storyline, because the quality is the king, you know, is the important thing for me. And honestly, like when you look at the thing, like let's say a, a, a hypothetical situation, right? Uh, you we end up with situation when we have like way more quests in the game right I, I don't know 20 more hours right but they are way lower quality right because we don't have time or because we don't have a possibility to produce them and so on and then as an artist i look at it and i'm like well i mean you know i i, I really you know i want to make sure that our players every time when they play the game they feel like okay this is next quest and i can trust the quest team 
and narrative teams that everything that is in the game is actually good you know what i will play and i, I won't have i want you guys to have that feeling and understand this right so imagine a situation when like you know suddenly you have 20 more hours of content right but it's all diluted long and just boring and you will feel bored you 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 will basically like seeing those two different versions you'll say okay really like probably just more concise uh version more focused would be better um sorry that i'm not responding to the chat but that was a long question i wanted to address jesus guys there's so much questions uh, so many questions um I'm sorry, I'm just picking out of random, uh, but I really want to... So we, we got the nails. I just want to make sure that our nails are well uh, adjusted to our character. I'm doing my best to build hair as I as I speak. Um, <laughs> yeah, at this rate, we are actually be playing the game for 12 years. I mean, I'm sorry, I uh, I will speed it up a bit, but not too much. I mean, we don't want, don't want to go too crazy. Uh, but... To be, to be honest, uh, it's just like, you know, conversation with you guys is, for me, the, the best part of it. Um, so, uh, Jesus, this is like way too strong. I need to find something that would be just feeling slightly... Actually, this might be the best one. Oh, the fire one. Hmm. Do you guys feel like fire, actually, on this... Um, I, I th I'm kind of feeling the fire here. By the way, the bra actually fits the, the hair. That's just an accident. I didn't know. <laughs> um okay um oh wow okay uh I'll, I'll i'll uh i'll check you know some some of the questions um uh side quests in the game were just as good as the witcher 3 if not better judy quest light stands i mean yeah th thank you i mean we obviously you know wanted to make sure that whatever we give you is 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 good and i'm glad you um you like it um the the thing is that what we have done with our side quest and what we are normally doing i love this tattoo though i think i'm staying with this um like the uh the the important thing that we are always doing with like when we are crafting the stories and so on as um as devs we always try to make sure that um we create as many different pitches for the quests so basically, like a small synopsis. So basically, two, three sentence descriptions, what actually the quest is going to be about. And you're like trying to create that meat, you know, okay, this is going to be it. And then quest designers and also writers, cinematic designers, open world designers, all the departments, they provide like an interesting combination of ideas. And then basically the directors, primarily quest director and me, we're going through those and picking the ideas. And then we, of course, you know, consult with leadership from other departments to just make sure that we are doing like a good combination. This is the this is the, the way how you actually... Um, how you actually get the good quality into the game okay guys i really need to speed up jesus it's it's already 20 minutes past eight uh, like in this rate we will make the character in this two hours okay um what we are gonna do hmm uh, we need like a badass v so i'm gonna go with a bit of the body um and then uh, what else definitely 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 we definitely need technical ability we want one core and we want intelligence because of the ram uh, so I feel I'm feeling this. Sorry for smacking my mic. Um, I'm feeling this. However, this might be better. I'm probably assigning like a complete noob, guys. Right, right now. Tell me. <laughs> yeah, nice to see you too. Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Like you know, guys, the majority of you. Okay, some of you I recognize from your nicknames. This is insane, actually. Uh, I mean, I'm glad that you're all following uh, following us being like the devs and, and so on. <laughs> uh, who was responsible? The question, who was responsible for Love Like Fire and the Malorian and its animation? The quest made just feels like an unstoppable badass and was amazing. Um, yeah, so actually, it, it, what, you, what you're asking for, uh, about is uh, is actually a quest and, and, and a feature that's been built by multiple different uh, people. And I really don't remember exactly who was doing uh, the, the Love Like Fire one. Definitely, I remember that Malorian is, of course, uh, of course you know, um, 
your, uh, you know, our gameplay designer that you may have seen in our Night City Wire. Uh, Pavo Kapawa, he's the one who's uh, behind a lot of work regarding the guns, but, you know, of course, our character our team, uh, Kamil Nowitzki and his team, they've been doing the guns, and specifically, like, Johnny's Malorian, there's a lot of work put into it, and I remember, like, our gameplay team, they, from the very beginning, they had this idea of... Um, they want to create this like badass feeling when you're like using Malorian. And this is basically how they did it. I, I can go in detail for hours to be honest, but you don't want that. <laughs> okay, um, so that's our V. That's our Nomad V. Roaming the Badlands, looting scrapyards, raiding fuel depots. Depots. Life on the road wasn't easy, but growing up in a nomad clan has its perks. Honesty, integrity, and love of a freedom, qualities that few in Night City possess and no amount of money can buy. Do you get it? Yeah. Okay, I think we are getting... Um, okay, let's move on because there's just so many... <laughs> bless the cinematic animators. Yes, bless them. I completely agree. They did a stellar job with this game. Hello, Pavel wanted to say I didn't play Cyberpunk yet. Much love to you. Uh, thank you for all the love, and I hope you will play Cyberpunk at some point. And I'm sorry, but I'm spoiling some stuff, probably. Um, okay, we are in our badass garage. Uh, uh, I hope you guys like our actually interactive mirrors. It was an idea our uh, game director had. Uh, I think that's, it's actually pretty cool um, to actually have it built like this. Jesus, I can even talk to you about this one shot for like in one hour probably. But I won't because I, I don't want to torment you. Uh, <laughs> question, is Mr. Blue Eyes a Gunther Odim? I'm not answering this question because it's up to you to decide. You know, we have left enough clues for you to, uh, to know. <laughs> question, do you remember who did the pickup quest? Well, I mean, it was me. So, um... I mean, with one important thing, the pickup quest was done by me. However, everything that I was doing, it was work built on the work of also other designers. For instance, one designer in my team, uh, Sara, Sara Grimmer. Uh, Sara, Sara is one of my seniors. She has put a lot of work in that quest uh, before I actually got it. So I would say it's a um, very much an effect of, of our work. Like last, I would say last two and a half, three years, it was uh, my work. But the, like I would say, the groundwork, the beginning, and so on, that was what Sarah did, so... Uh, praise her. <laughs> yeah, okay, I love that question. Do you think we came here for speedrunning? Please, we are here for TED Talks of indi on individual scenes. I mean, you know, like, to be honest, regarding the scenes, uh, there are so many more qualified people that could talk to you about this, like our cinematic designers that are so much better than me in this. So, okay, we here right. remove that said it was nothing serious when I came in. Bad. said you were sure. Oh god, guys, this is happening! This is happening! We are playing the game! Another shop where they won't ask a lone nomad while she's hugging the border. Jesus, he is mean. Dude. What's up? He is mean like hell. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you it, we can talk a lot, you know, about like story, environmental storytelling in this scene. Like, look at this fucking garage. This is a masterpiece for me when it comes to the telling the story of the place and of what actually you want to um, introduce the game, the, the player to, right? Because we wanted to place you in a very small, limited space, so as a player, you'll be able to actually add. Um, you, you will be able to, as a player, walk around, look around, and start slowly feeling that atmosphere, right? And just, just look around. Like, what environmental storytelling is, by the way, for people that maybe don't, don't know it, it's, it's the moment when... Uh, it's, it's the moment when it is, is telling the story through the location and the surroundings. And look, what is the story that um, this location tells us? Let's, let's look around, right? So, first of all, the guy has spare... Uh, spare tires, right? Okay, cool. And he has a lot of tools, but then you can guess, okay, he's probably like a mechanic, right? Um, and okay, there are things here. Okay, let's loot that water. That's cool. Okay, I saw that, saw the thing too. Uh... <laughs> I 
Uh, okay, you think I think you're one of the most important people who work on CDP. Oh, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say so. Like, please, just don't don't think don't think so. Like, I am one of I I am one of the leads. Yes, but you know, like this game has been made by a lot of people and a lot of teams, and you know, like I wouldn't be able to do all that without them, right? Like, I'm just leading the team and I'm one of the designers. And yes, I designed some stuff. I had some impact on the game, of course. But I mean. You know, like, just look at this. Like, I wouldn't know how to use the modeling tools to prepare this and, and you know, to make it look like this. Or all those boxes. This is so beautiful. But anyway, uh, when you look at the storytelling here, like, you can see, okay, there is a high-octane brand, right? Something that probably is uh, important in our lore. Looking around then, there are also some, th some elements that are basically a pieces of a pop culture. And I think this is really important because when we've been designing Cyberpunk, one of our things was like, okay, we need to try to emulate the and design the culture. You know, like the fact that actually in the game, you, you can, as a player, see uh, you can you can see that you know there was this actual you know development let's say from 2020 to 2077 and what what, what have been like a natural things that people have been doing so you know like for instance this is how you know the graffiti can be developed and you know can can look like like for instance like look here like the the brain um the brain uh, sticker that I have here in the center of my screen or pu purple wizard you can see okay so probably you know the weed is uh, publicly available available so or you know um, or other uh, other stickers here and you can see this is all telling a story right so we know okay so in this world the weed is available okay the brain so probably people you know think that um, uh, uh, you know you, you can speak I, I guess you know um, think about some storytelling regarding this like for instance you know probably uh a lot of people think that you are what you eat in a way or and also that you know that your brain is sort of a has a similar structure as this or you know like the way it looks it's similar or uh you know that your brain is actually filled with something that was pre pre packaged and and produced and prepared for you so basically that your thoughts are not your own and so on so do you get it what i mean when i say that basically the stickers and like element like that tells a story in the game this is what i mean and i mean don't get me don't don't even uh, you know um don't, don't, don't even let me to, to get into uh, the the other things here, uh, but it's really it's just it's just really excellent to just go over this and let's look at it like how our environment art team like looked at it and they are actually storytellers too right they looked at it and they were like okay what we can do right here like what story this poster tells right the focus one what what is the story here like you see the dude who is most likely highly augmented right. So this is, in a way, some kind of an advertisement, you can say, or something that emphasizes in the culture um, the, the, the fact that, you know, like, you should be, uh, that, you, you know, you can achieve that focus using, uh, you know, in all other artificial means. You can see this red blink in his eye, right? Um, and, I mean, I don't want to go much into details here, but I just want you to start, like, seeing those things and start thinking about those. Or, like, here, right? Um... There's just so, there's just so many excellent uh, small things that you can actually uh, take take out from this and you know like don't get me wrong we we've been like learning you know when be, when building this game and trying to like figure out okay what we can do and you know I mean let's go into actual storytelling like uh, you know I didn't really play play long uh, to be honest <laughs> this is probably the longest first minute in your life. Talking about pop culture, does Judy have a tattoo with a ghost in the shell theme on the left arm? Yes, she does actually. Um, the the Judy uh, Judy's Judy's tattoo on on her arm uh, is of course a, a joke that um, I believe our Consabra team wanted to make, uh, which I think is is amazing. So um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm just trying to like keep up with the chat, but it, it's good that the chat is slowed down because god damn it I wouldn't be able to you know to do this anyway uh, Let's go into actually some some other elements like you know, you have conquer here, right? Uh, but I wanted to show you this right So you can go into like different computers and so on in in our game and of course, you know you have stuff like network right uh, and this is something that uh, our two designers, like uh, Kasha and Pavo, have been working on, uh, you know, and of course uh, our amazing um, 
UI team and our art teams. Uh, uh, fun fact, actually, one our moderator uh, is actually their producer. And you can say something in the chat so they know who you are. Um, but yeah, uh, so this is basically, uh, when you look at it, like this is a piece of the storytelling we've been doing. Like you can go guide through the Night City, right? And basically we've been paying attention to all those small things when you can actually, you know, um, learn about the small small elements here and so on there's like ton of jokes and elements when we've been when we've been trying to like uh find a reference here and you know for instance you have the samuri web page right that you can actually find and karim here who's mentioned here i think it's a character if you play the game you may know who karim is uh but just spoiler alert he appears later uh somewhere in the game um so yeah <laughs> Cyber deal, cyberpunk DLC when I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Um, Jesus, guys, it's just like I love your questions to be honest, but it just it will take me like a like literally like a TED talks uh, in, in hours uh, to just talk to you about it. Yeah, but anyway, um, this is a, like in card, you know, uh, web page. Um, what else we can have here that could be interesting? Mayor of a Night City. This is kind of cool. So this is of course a small uh, something that we in a storytelling that we call a um, foreshadowing. So we are here preparing you to get to know actually the storyline. Those that actually finished um, the uh, the game or finished the side quest, you know what I'm talking about here right so we are slowly you know preparing you and so on and as a player you can get here and you know start to learn and read about those things and so on and there are some really interesting highlights and things to find uh, in that um in that text so I I just love the fact that you know uh, our designers are able to work on this and and prepare it but you know uh but you, you have also like elements like this you know shop inventory stuff that actually fits here you know like spark products crank bearings eight you know and starter oil pan oh it's good that he has a pan you know shout out for which are three people who remember that the pan quest it was um it was uh, something you know <laughs> uh question did i work on a carries quest whoever designed quest of his storyline did a breathtaking job <laughs> yeah actually so um the uh carries quests is the first uh, the first uh quests for carry are actually in fact quests that i worked on uh and then there are quests that two other designers uh, in my team alex and asha uh worked on uh and uh, yeah i absolutely fucking love them i i was just so pumped for like carry storyline the only thing is that it's kind of late um in the game so um uh, not not all of you will find it, but I hope that people who 100% the game will actually find it. Um, okay, guys, we have Mega Medicine Lottery. Oh, that's interesting. Normally, those are about enlarging the penis, so I'm kind of disappointed. Anyway, <laughs> but even when you're looking about the stuff like this, you can already see that we are doing a, like, you know, world building using stuff like this. Even the um, malware, uh, sorry, not even the malware, but the spam that you're getting on your computer is something that is, you know, adjusted to the world. Yeah. <laughs> Our quick threat neutralization software can prevent identity theft and implant hijacking. And you can see this is so ingrained in, like cyberpunk lore. Just I just love stuff like that. You're a winner. Oh shit. Kiroshi Corp. Okay. Greetings user. Due to your continued use of Kiroshi services. Okay. Kinoshi. Oh Jesus. Okay. Kinoshi? <laughs> okay, they baited me. Good, good one. Okay, good one. That's not really. That's not really a replay to the email 10 minutes to claim your price. Okay, I think we're too late, by the way. Uh, well, anyway, uh, that was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> Tiancha Pomelo. Hmm. Uh, by the way, work on brands uh, that we have been doing in this game is something that I so enjoyed. Like, I myself didn't work on the brands. But we had designers in our team, for instance, Patrick Mills, who, you know, for sure. And I think actually Patrick is with us um, uh, right now on the chat, or he at least used to be. Patrick was the one who was like a consultant. You're wearing my patience. I mean, I'm glad, dude. I'm um, just, you know, chilling. <laughs> 
But uh, it's just like the, the work that we've been doing, you know, to prepare actually brands for the game is just, it was insane amount of time, you know, uh, design work that Patrick was doing on the side of the lore, but also like Alex and other designers were helping him. And there was ton of artists, you know, um, that just did incredible wor work, like actually preparing all those brands and so on. To be honest, for me, this was like one of the funniest things to follow. You now look at the Orgatic. Look at the Orgatic commercial. I mean, come on. This is just a thing of beauty. Seriously. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. Um, why there is so much dildos in the game? Well, I mean, I don't know. Um, wh wh what is your theory? Uh, what, uh, what is your... Uh, <laughs> what is your... <laughs> Uh, let's see your salsa way. I mean, you know, I maybe I won't be showing my salsa today, but if you have played Witcher 3, first expansion, uh, Hearts of Stone during wedding quest that they did, um, Geralt is dancing, right? So he is uh, a moment when you go on the dance floor and you use the interaction to start dancing. This is, uh, uh, he's actually dancing salsa and this is me. I have been doing mocap for that uh, scene. So yeah. <laughs> So I, uh, I hope you have enjoyed it. So this is as much sauce as you can see right now. Um, oh God. Shout out to Boris. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Boris, Boris is our adaptation director. He did an incredible job with directing the voiceovers. <laughs> you know, I don't have all day. Oh shit, okay. I mean, he doesn't have all day. Actually, frankly, we don't too. You know, so let's... <laughs> Let's move. Let's move on. Okay, check engine. Step aside. I'm going to pay you what we agreed. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to pay you what we agreed. Not one anymore. Huh. For that, you can borrow my tools and fix it yourself. Okay, whatever, dude. That's fine. Step aside. What? Got any idea what to do? Hmm. Okay, I want to talk to you about something. So I'm sorry, but it was already enough material for me to have like a, a you know, a, a, a detailed analysis. But I just wanted to uh, show you something. So do you know why you see actually the uh, hands? You see the hands because this is something that our cinematic team and our animation team, they've been calling this a body presence. And, you know, I mean, I mean, the name is known in a, in a um, gaming industry, especially in the games when you have first person perspective scenes. But what's cool here no, is uh, that's why, Jesus, the dude is annoying me with this, <laughs> with this thing. But what I'm trying to say is you as a, um, as a as a designers we've been trying to pay attention to moments when you can actually see the interacting with the world and like touching things that's why you just have so much hands you know all the time doing things because we wanted you to feel present in the place you know and um when when we'll be going over this game uh, it will probably take like 12 years as i said uh, in my tweet uh, you will no, see no, actually uh, that there's lots more actually body present uh, bo body presence in the game Oh, by s bypass the coping. I'm thinking. Okay, let's see what this does. I'm thinking, thinking. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and your chirping is not helping. Right. Don't do not interrupt. I'm gonna me. bypass the coupling and rig a hot wire. Jesus. The run on and on. Could seize up. Okay. <laughs> you can be really a dick to our mechanic. Jesus. Okay. No, we are not playing it. We are we are not playing like this. We are not like this. No, we are okay. We are not. We are not like that, right? No, we are not. <laughs> no, we are playing it nice. We are playing it nice. V, who's 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 nice to people, you know. By the way, I love his cyberware. Like that small that small you know touches like this. They just basically put the character more in world and they just make them more real. And also, you know, the fact that he is rocking the brand that you actually have here too. High Octane 1, right? This is really cool. Anyway, dude, let's go into the car. Get in. Another, another situation, body presence, right? You get into the thing, you see all the time your character, hand on the wheel. By the way, the dog is awesome. <laughs> I just love that. Okay, let's start the engine. By the way, just this interior. I'm sorry, guys. I don't want to like sound that I'm just, but it's just like this is a work of our vehicle artist. Fucking hell, this is just so awesome. Wow, 
Anyway, uh, sorry. Like, you know, it's it's so cool because, like, normally when I play or when we were doing the reviews and so on or when I play this the game, I actually don't have that much time. And right now I have all the time in the world. So I can actually actually look at stuff and, and be like, you know, um, and just enjoy it and just see all those details. Huh. Connect to radio station. Hmm. I'm looking for someone. Jackie Wells. Maybe, maybe... That was actually a really cool thing, though. Did that that it was done here just a moment ago? Um, You're wearing on my patience now. <laughs> okay, I'm just trying to read some of the comments. I'm sorry, but you guys are incredible. I have to say so, um, and I really appreciate your comments. You're you're awesome. Uh, okay, anyway, um, moving on. So I wanted to show you something. Look what happens. I'm asking this question. I'm looking for someone. Jackie Wells, if you maybe. This is a real, really awesome thing that our cinematic designers are doing, and I know this is a small thing, right? I, I just, I'm just like trying to show us our toolbox, kind of what we are using. Like I have asked the question, right? For someone. And the dude, he doesn't really answer, like he doesn't go into like a lengthy explanation or whatever, but it's basically our cinematic designers working with our artists, and they're like, you know what, actually, you know, he doesn't have to say anything, he can just do the dash gesture and prepare this. This is such a small thing, but our cinematic team and, and cinematic designers have been paying attention to those things to just make sure that those people are alive. Because in the real world, not everybody is like rambling all the time. They are not like me, right? <laughs> not everybody is like me <laughs> to just like talk shit all the time. So they basically, uh, people just sometimes simply, people just sometimes simply nod. And that's enough, right? And this is so cool. And I mean, I, I love that because like not that many games do it. And I just love the fact that, um, you know, our cinematic team was able to actually pull it off. It's really cool. Okay, let's connect. Let's connect. Okay, we have a lot of cables. Uh-huh. And this is an, another element that I want to talk to you about. Didn't know you had a customer. Uh, rolled in a, a few hours past. <laughs> I thought she'd at least called in. The Don't you sweat it, Mike. We're gonna hash it out. Yeah, this is something that we call staging. What you just Don't saw. Don't you know you owe the sheriff a word when you pay his town a visit to tell him what's brought you here? Jesus, I. Maybe even over a cup of coffee. Okay, I mean, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be like nerding so much on those things, but you know, like I'm a game dev, right? And it just like. Stuff like that just makes me, I, I love this. So look what happened. Because I'm sitting behind a car and I'm and we are in the first person. Okay, dude, like let me, I'm streaming. So please don't talk to me for a moment. Um, so uh, what basically, um, because we are in first person, we sit you behind the wheel and you can look forward and we know basically what is your camera angle. So that's why the uh, quest designer and artist and, and cinematic designer and like, um, cinematic animators they come up with this idea okay let's sit the player behind the wheel so that we'll have that shot so then basically then when the sheriff is actually approaching us he's in the full view so you can be literally like looking like this or like trying to avoid that scene as much as you can oh by the way a shout out for maids of satan um but you can you can basically like uh try not to look at the scene as much as you can but basically the game in a very gentle way tries to lead you you know it's just a suggestion hey if you will just look there you will just see some really cool stuff you know and and that's it that's it you know he just like walks towards us and you know it may it may feel simple but it's not it's actually it just took us a bit of learning you know how to actually do this you know our cinematic designers like pulled this off really well i love that but anyway uh um, <laughs> when you play the first time you thought you, he's gonna kill you yeah yeah actually like that that was like a kind of an intention in the scene because this is why he's th that's why that's why it's built like this because we are trying to make sure that we will build attention so uh you know like that's why he's using this kind of an aggressive pose you know has a hand on his hip you know he's leaning over you so that you have a feeling as a player that you're sort of trapped you're not really trapped, right? But it's not about it. It's about subtlety, right? Like in Cyberpunk, we have been playing a lot with subtlety. And it's about subtlety. He comes over, leans over you, and look at his eyes. He's actually looking at me, 
He's looking down, right? But he's actually looking at me and he's trying to be threatening. And this is really awesome. Uh, so the, his pose uh, and another detail, like detail element uh, it, that, that I just love. Do you see his hand here? What we are trying to do here, we are always trying to sh make sure that you know as a player that this is a cyberpunk world. And the way we are trying to tell that story is on many different levels. And one of the levels is pointing out to you important elements on your screen so that as a player you can start seeing slowly and being like, oh wait, okay, so actually sheriffs in this world, they wear this fucking badass like gorilla arms what? or like augmented, augmented um, palm. Like uh, I think it's just a, um, I think it's a grip. Uh, this is how it's called. But yeah, uh, and you can see all the augmentations and so on in that moment when you have a close-up, you know, and, and, and the fact that he's leaning and his hand is visible, like, there was just a few subtle things that happened here, but they actually all work together to create that feeling. Uh, question, is, is it difficult for you not to talk about uh, next games? I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna talk about next games, because we're playing Cyberpunk today. Uh, yeah, there's a question about the camera attached to his hat. Yeah, cor uh, correct. Uh, that's also another thing. It's basically like a spin um, an, or, an, or an idea our character our team had, I believe, to just like show, okay, this is how in the future that could look like. Like right now we have already cops wearing the cameras. Uh, hey. A lot of them actually wow. have to wear them all the time and even have them on all the time and so on. So this is just, we are just playing with that trope. Any plans to add more music to the game? I mean, I won't be talking more about the plans, but the, the game, I'm focusing on what we have done, okay? And when we will actually know about stuff that we want to do, we will tell you guys. You, you can be assured, like, you will be the first to find out. <laughs> Is it hard not to mention DLC right now? Well, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not mentioning DLC because uh, I don't know anything about it. So, that's fine. <laughs> uh, what I don't like about the game and what needs improvements the most oh god I mean we would uh, that would be a really long discussion um, what uh, you know because I would like to and I would want to like explain so when we'll be playing the, it, when we'll be playing and when we'll be seeing elements like this I will talk Suddenly about it more right shot. because right now I have to go into like a lengthy explanation and I don't think it will be that interesting like right away uh, as we approach it and uh, approach elements like this uh, we'll be talking a bit about it I, I'm sure of it okay I, I think I'll, I need to start slowly moving on okay Shout out to CP77G Gongs. These chooms love you lots. Okay, thank you. Thank you, chooms. I love you too. I mean, I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm, I, I don't know really what I did to be, uh, you know, to, to get that love, but I mean, thank you. You know, I I'm, I'm hope you guys en enjoying Cyberpunk. That's really the most important thing for me. You think that Sheriff waited enough? <laughs> I mean, really? Like, we wanted to annoy him. I just also like, did you, did you guys see the smirk on his face? That guy. Okay, anyway. Hey, I'm talking to you. I mean, you were technically not talking. You were just quiet. So, you know, it's fine. <laughs> Chat, please, could you please stop trying to get this man fired? Thanks. I mean, I would appreciate that too. I mean, to be honest, uh, I would love not to get fired, like, you know, tomorrow. So, you know. <laughs> He will call Ozob for you. Uh, yeah, I mean, it could could be, could be. Uh, I hope you guys know who Ozob is. Was Meredith Stout ever a full romance at any point? Um, well, I mean, I don't want to really go, get, go, go much into detail regarding that uh, specific topic. So things that we decided because of the quality decisions. Uh, to, to build in the game the way it's built, uh, but definitely like the way it's done in the game, it was intended. So that's the way because the Meredith Stout is also uh, the character that I had the pleasure to work on, and uh, you know, um, I don't want to spoil, but the scene with hair, the very specific one where you find also the very specific weapon, is also something that I did because I'm a um, you know um, 
a very, um, um, I have a very specific taste, <laughs> it seems. I, I just wanted to do something cool with this character. But yes, I mean, if you think about, like, actually uh, Meredith Stout, why she's built like this, that was my intention. Um, uh, the, the cinematic designer that I worked with on this, Michał Brzeźniak, and our and writer, Atomic Marhevka, we, we were all on the same page regarding, like, our vision that this is how we wanted to, this is how we wanted to show uh, Stout at that point. And, and you need to think, like, okay, why she is actually depicted like this in... Like, in our understanding, in my perspective, she wouldn't really fit. Uh, she wouldn't really, um, like, a full, really, romance wouldn't really work for her because she's not that kind of character. And, you know, like, I left lots of different, uh, you know, um, how to say it, breadcrumbs for you to know why it's not done like this. So uh, we are always trying to, in a way, telegraph to you as a, as a player, okay, why certain things like done like that and so on. You know, so I, I can't imagine you going for like a picnic, you know, outside of a town with, with Stout because that would be out of character for her, right? Of course, you know, we could come up with something really cool, you know, that she could do, but that's not the thing. You know, she wouldn't like romance you in that way. And, and that was an important thing for that character. So just just always remember who the character is, you know, um, like doing doing stuff that is like outlandish for that person may feel like a good idea, but it's not. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> why didn't you want to put Siri in the game? Up, uh, I I don't know. Um, I <laughs> I can't say much much more about this. Um, there are some tropes, you know. <laughs> so this is more Pavo Sasko stream with cyberpunk illustrations. You guys are cracking me up. I'm, I'm moving on. Okay. No worry, I won't be Let's move on. Didn't answer my question now, did you? Yeah, I mean, we... Name's Andrew Jones. Probably heard of me. I mean, I didn't really. Uh, okay. Served in spec ops during the last war. Silver showguns? Ring any bells? Oh, Jesus. I'm, um, okay, let's not piss him off. Don't like to get along, do ya? I mean, we're playing nice V, right? Like, nice, civilized, uh... Nomad vehicle? <laughs> Might have expected that. You can see that he's doing the threatening poses all the time, right? You can see that, right? Like, right now, when, 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 you, when you have this, like, you can see that whatever... He, he is doing stuff to make you feel uneasy. And also one excellent thing that you can see in that scene is also like the fact that when you were, um, <laughs> who messed with his breakfast, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, the thing is that what you can see here is like, I, as a player, I can decide not to actually answer the question and, and to pick like a safer option uh, uh, as such. And, and this is something we came up with when, when we were like creating um, lots of different prototypes for the game, you know, to just like show, you know, what we could use, you know, what we can do in the scenes. And uh, that was one of the things uh, I think our cinematic designers proposed to actually try that. Uh, and then we have found a way uh, how to do it well. And I think there are some scenes, especially like, for instance, that one was a good example where it works kind of well, uh, I have to say. Okay. Oh, jeez. <laughs> what? Suddenly all shy. Huh. Don't know if anyone in the chat played Mafia 3, but the Sheriff's voiceover also voiced the big bad in Mafia 3. Oh, here you go. I didn't know that. Huh. Hey, you can learn some stuff. Yeah. Oh, oh, there's also Philip guys on the chat, by the way. I just saw him. Uh, Philip, Philip is uh, our uh, quest design uh, coordinator, our senior, and my pal in the team. And he did plenty of quests for the game. Uh, okay, you know, I'm just, I, I could spend, like, hours just looking at you guys. Um, drink some water. Um, the, the, I, um, you know, I have something, you know. By the way, uh, a, a Witcher, Witcher 3 mug, you know, um, for those who who remember. We actually got them as, a, as devs um, for the, um, in our collector's editions, hey, I believe. I'm talking to you. <sighs> that guy, he just, yeah. So, uh, you guys drink too, by the way. <laughs> uh, question is, is that vodka? Well, I mean, it's not vodka. <laughs> it's not vodka. It's exactly, it's a real water, uh, real cyberpunk water. No, it's a, it's, it's a Coke. Uh, the thing is, I don't drink alcohol at all. Uh, I'm a straight edge. As straight edge as you can. 
Jolly is the least talked about thing when it comes to this game. The technology is really amazing. Yeah, I agree. I mean, a Jolly actually really kicks ass. Like this, this thinks what it does and actually I'll like how it, it looks is I'm amazing. No, to linger. <sighs> no, you sure shit don't. Look about. Th look at this guy's face. Nothing like, boils my blood like a fucking stray. <laughs> he's just doing. Pitch camp? He's just doing weirder shit with his face than me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a shout out to Philip. Uh, love your work on The Witcher. Yeah, actually, actually, Philip, uh, Philip did some really cool stuff. You could see his quest in the uh, second expansion pack uh, in Blood and Wine, the um, Smith of Night, the, the, the story about the lady who has one curse uh, that gives her feathers. I uh, don't want to spoil more, but you know which one. Uh, the lengthy one. Hey, I'm talking to you. Are every single scene animated with mocap? Uh, yes, even the minor ones. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Would you consider adding a first-person mode to the game? Well, you know. <laughs> I mean, our our vision was to go with first-person, so this is what we wanted to do. Um, and, you know, like stuff like, you know, body Something presence all and shot. all things considered like this, that was a part of our vision, right? And, and we, we, we uh, wanted, really wanted to stick to it, right? The laugh scene with Judy, oh shit, spoilers. <laughs> the laugh scene with Judy is probably the best I've ever seen in video game. Very romantic, well directed, congratulations. Yeah, I don't actually remember who did the, um, mm, who did the a sex scene with, uh, with Judy, so uh, apologies for this. But I do know that it's, it's damn awesome. So, and we are playing female V, by the way, so you know what that means, right? We're gonna try to, um, um, make interesting stream at some point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and when we will be doing this, I will find out for you actually who were the people so that they can give them a shout. Who were the people who actually did that amazing scene for you? Uh, Pavo sending love from Czech Republic. Thank you. Hey, I'm talking to you. Pa we are almost 1,000 viewers. Yeah, I mean, I, I see that and it's insane, uh, to be completely honest. And let's move on. Uh, no I don't know, no no, don't know what you guys are doing no here. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I was, I was hoping it would be a chill, small stream. My family's in but um, I very much appreciate that you're here. This is so nice. Makes you an outcast among outcasts. Yeah. Sure as hell hope you'll be on your way before long. <laughs> You're a real hospitable bunch. This is a good one. I heard one. this place was famous for its hospitality. Ah, oh, glad to see it wasn't just rumors. You are damn right we are. When people come along who know how to behave. Okay. Let's try to move on. on my, way in. my antenna's down and I need to radio someone. What you need's to hightail it out of here without another word. Ain't got no mind to see you drifting around these parts. Got it? Okay. Jesus. And um would you would you just would you just uh saw suddenly all shot. <laughs> Sadly, oh, shy. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I've kind of saw. Shy, I just wanted to tell you um uh <laughs> I just wanted to tell you something. So you saw what that guy did. He changed the post from the threatening one to the one that is like kind of a self-confident strong one. But he's on the side. And the reason is because we'll be leaving there. We'll be, of course, you know, driving off. Um, and then you can say, okay, um, yeah, man, close door. I want to know any trouble. <laughs> I don't want to know it. it clear. I don't want any trouble. Then stop looking for it and hit the road quick. Okay, he wants us to drive off. But, you know, we won't do it like that easily, right? Uh, I, I just, uh, <laughs> yeah, we will roll in a second. One just wanted to make sure, wanted to uh, point out something. So, as I was mentioning to you staging, right, you saw, like, when he was at the front, now he moved actually to the side, and then suddenly, like, that scene from being closed off when we were at the beginning and walking around and so on, it naturally transitioned to the point when we can actually drive off, right? And this is, this is something that I really like, that our... Um, uh, that our um, 
cinematic uh, designers did when it comes to the setup. Jesus, okay, I'm, I'm already going, uh, I'm already going off the rails here. Um. <laughs> okay, um, I switched to the controller by the way because I kind of prefer to the controller, uh, the, the controller one. So yeah. Okay, I, I'm supposed to go to the telecom tower, but before we do so, I wanted to actually show you a few things uh, here. So let's actually get out. By the way, small detail uh, that you have, maybe you have just realized, I parked like a sloppy uh, driver. And you can see here, like, I couldn't get out. So what V did, well, she switched, right? I used the button to actually go left, and she decided, wait, the door's blocked. Holy shit, I'm switching to the right one. Uh, just a small touch. Uh, I like that. I like that small feature. Anyway, um, just wanted to show you, like, a few things, right? So here's basically that you can you can see um the uh some some things you know after we have actually changed you can go to the sheriff i told you to disappear now don't test my patience <laughs> sorry but he is um uh, amazing um uh, just an amazing character what up boy hmm not a talkative one right <laughs> now, do you see what the scene is doing, actually? I just wanted to ask you. Do you see what the scene is doing? It's telling the story. You know? And that scene is telling a story. And it's a super simple one. But it's basically like... You, you can see how simple and small the things can be, actually, in the world. To just make them feel that they they match and, and work and you can see yeah i mean there's a question what kid is sniffing i don't know um <laughs> do i play with ray tracing no uh, because my computer is too uh, weak i'm actually i have actually pretty pretty um like maybe not weak but i would say it modest rig uh so no this is no rtx actually uh <laughs> oh, uh, we have uh, we have our cinematic designer Vitrin that just said hi. Uh, Pavo is uh, in our cinematic team. He did lots of scenes. And Pavo, by the way, there was a shout out to you to uh, Carrie's scene. You know. So uh, yes, I did switch to the controller. It's just like a bit more, uh, a bit easier for me to uh, uh, to steer. <laughs> There's so many reds on the chat right now. Jesus. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, another person, SQ, is also uh, our uh, the, the member of the red team. And of course, Banan, Banan you know, he is uh, taking care of our events. And he's a Swiss knife in our studio. Jesus, okay, we have so many Pavos. Uh, let's move on. So I was, I was showing you this small bit here, but there's lots more going on. There we are, and the 6th Street Jarheads walk in, five of them. Shit, they found you? Fuck knows if they were looking or if it was just a coincidence. What happened? We hauled ass out through the kitchen. Wouldn't be here otherwise. Uh huh. So just like a small, you know, small community scene that you can see, and uh, you know, after uh, when they basically comment on on things that are important in the lore, you know, they were talking about Sixth Street and whatnot, you know. And then, you know, the dude went and he's just fixing his Mai Mai or basically checking his Mai Mai. Uh, I mean, dude, your car is in a fucking terrible, a terrible state. Even though it's kind of charming, to be honest, uh, to drive uh, such a tin can. But yeah, <laughs> Mai Mai, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm just laughing at you guys joking on Pavos and chat. Uh, yeah, um, love your work. Thank you. Uh, thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, please have in mind that, you know, there's lots of different devs that actually worked on this game. I'm, I'm just one person. <laughs> okay, uh, anyway, uh, let's let's check out some other stuff. Hmm. Who do we have here? Such a such an interesting person. No? Okay, let's see what It blows. Is. It blows? Oh, god damn it. It does. Okay. I mean, clearly does. Okay. 
Let's see this this dude. What's it's up? Important. important that you're good. <laughs> okay, I mean, uh, you know, uh, I'm glad. I'm glad, definitely. Uh, let's let's look around and see basically what our what our cool like storytelling bits we have here. Okay, so like a a, a place that you would normally see in in a small like um, American suburb city. Wicked Wicked Tires Auto Shop. Okay. What's up? Hmm. Playing that cards, yo. Dude, that metal hands. By the way, you can hear, see here basically a piece of cyberware that is a um, part of like an anthro anthro entropy, and um, those. Uh, it, it's interesting. It's, it's basically one of our artistic styles, and basically the entropic elements are are all of those that are used by poor people. So people that can't really afford it. But you can see here. This guy actually has a bit better hand, even though it's kind of more rusty, you know? But, you know, he can he can actually afford this. Interesting. Okay, and, and this dude is clearly looking at his cards. But you can see basically here how using very small um, scenes like this, you can actually build a... Um, you can actually build a storytelling in your game, right? What do you think about Nexus mods? Oh, I mean, I I'm I'm cheering for the guys in the Nexus mods. To be honest, like in our in our uh, uh, in our um, game, there's so many different um, in our studio. There's so many modders actually that have been like hired by us. Uh, in my team, even I have like four or five modders at this point. People who have been modding Witcher Three, uh, and um, I think modding is an excellent way to get into the game dev. Uh, industry and yeah, I absolutely love mods and I cheer for the guys and Nexus mods. I hope they uh, and I just always always check what they are actually uh, preparing and so on. And it's really cool, you know, to see your 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 you know your game receiving some kind of a mod. Uh, this is a really cool storytelling piece, actually. Um, you probably know about this or, or not, but basically, like the gangs uh, have been marking uh, their terrain like this, throwing basically shoes on a high voltage lines so lines like this but also also for instance a basketball um courts and so on so this is just another piece of the storytelling right hey bro what up how is the uh, shakashuka doing or you know whatever you're cooking there just a pity it's not a meat man yeah i know what do i say <laughs> i mean i don't know what you say but <laughs> it's uh it's clearly um you clearly don't have to say much. Okay, let's check. Nomads for the thick skinned. Hmm, okay. Now, another piece of storytelling that we have in the game is, of course, the shards. And I personally love the shards. I think we have around 600 of them that are unique. Um, I think that was the number that at the end we ended up with. Uh, uh, and I'm talking on uh, about shards like even even without, um, including, sorry, including like emails and so on. So basically all those like written text that you can find, which is like quite a bit actually. Nomads for the thick skin. Okay, the matter's simple. Whatever you read or hear about the nomads in the city media doesn't hold an, an ounce of water. The biggest lie bundled around is that being a nomad is a job. It's not. Nomad is, is a lifestyle. See, if you want to know something about nomads, all you have to do is ask one yourself. Luckily, I already know the question because I've been asked them a thousand times. So let's get started, shall we? And you can see that this actually shard has been placed here not um, be, be, because of a reason, right? We have place, placed it here because we wanted to make sure that we are introducing you slowly to all the elements of the lore and so on, right? This piece is basically telling the story, right? It's telling the story and it's, it's, it, this, its goal is to make you feel like a nomad. And um, quest designers that, and, and level designers that have been working on the locations, you know, for a certain quest, we have done a conscious work of like going over the locations and making sure that all the shards are placed in a way that they will give you as a player additional background. 
is it you or your teams writing the shards did mike himself also contribute i'd say it's a great question the shards are written basically uh, we work the same way as always so basically all the texts are always in 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 so-called debug so like in a prepared first drafted versions that are prepared by the quest designers or open world designers and then our writers in polish provide first version and then our adaptation team writes the english version so basically we work on the polish one and then the english one after and those ones that you're reading are written by our writers our polish writing team and our english writing team so those teams are responsible for those uh and the question was that mike uh, himself also contributed i mean mike was the one that we've been consulting with you know actually like i mentioned a few times our uh designer patrick uh patrick is our one of our seniors he has been co close contact with talsorian and of course you know mike has been consulted uh, on many matters um i'm not aware of him writing any of those directly but he was definitely consulted regarding like lore topics Oh, and we have we have also the, uh, we have also altered cyborg. Okay, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> she is. Uh, this is our um, our graphic designer from Red. I'm glad to see you. Hello from India, Pavo. Jesus, what a, what time is in India, man? What are some inspirations in as a quest designer? I mean, pff, uh, pretty much every, all the cultural things that you can find, you know, all kinds of culture, uh, all, all kinds of things that you can consume as a culture, you know, like for instance, right now, I'm just finishing up uh, The Polar, a comic book by Victor Santos. I'm reading right now the fourth volume, um, which is an excellent comic book. It's actually really highly regarded from DC Comics. And just before I have finished all our cyberpunk comic books, uh, the one, the story about Nadia, who's a member of... Um, um, of a trauma team. Really cool one, though. Really cool one. Uh, I was actually really, really enjoying it. So, uh, it, it just like I always... 1 a.m. in India. Okay, cool. It's not too bad. Could be could be worse, <laughs> I would say. Could be worse. A lot of NCPD shards have a connection to gigs. Who's uh, created Michael Akulov with the gig fixer merch soldiers? <laughs> yeah, so all the gigs are actually the work of our open world team. So all those are uh, are are the work of the of the open world team. This is our sister team. We work very closely together. Open world team is responsible for filling out the world with like cool stuff in places where the quests are not happening. And in places when the quests are happening, when you have both of those in the same time, um, on, on the place we are uh, cooperating together. So this is our open world team's work. Yeah. Um, okay, the dude is doing that shakashuka. Um, uh, anyway, uh, not shakashuka, shashwik, uh, of course, you know. Okay, competition going on. Okay, council of men approves. Cool, uh, let's check him. I have no reason to live. <laughs> okay, let's move on, guys. <laughs> that was not supposed to. Uh, <laughs> that was not supposed to happen. <laughs> no, no. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell is that? Do you hear this music? Damn. Oh, I just love this music. Let's enjoy. Oh, hey. Hello. Hello, will you sing for us? Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, your repertoire is not really big. Could always be worse. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's uh, that's the angle I prefer. Definitely, we'll leave it Brandon's quarterly. Okay, cool. Let's check this one out. Actually, I, I just love reading those. Guest editorial. Brandon's editors have long strived to strike a balance between real lived experience and technological experiential purity. The more heavily they process the material, the more abstracted the pathways, the clearer the brain there's recordings, these fundamental elements of design have guided editors since the first wave of brain-to-brain -brain experience, sharing technology took hold. In their pursuit of balance, however, the editors have clearly showed a bias for purity 
over naturalism over the years. Even going so far to use it as a point of pride in the quality of their production. Now, you know why actually the Brandon's uh, shard is here? Because there is a quest about the Brandon's coming actually in the um, in the prologue. And that's the one of the reasons why um, we have placed it here. Because as uh, designers, we are putting like a conscious effort to like slowly introduce you to the... Uh, hmm. The wall. To the lower. Why does a wall separate South California from its Noster siblings? Nusa officials will tell you it's about ensuring freedom and safety. I, I won't read more about this one because I wanted to move on slowly so that we can, you know, kick it off eh, and just like actually, you know, start doing something a bit more. Then come hallucinations, violent seizures at the end. They know where it came from? Drugs, I heard. Started somewhere in Pacifica, they were saying on the news. Jesus. Okay. Wow. Dude, that was rude as hell. I, I bet she was she's hurt now because of this. What a what a bad person. Let's loot this thing. What is this? Are we able to loot this? Are we even able to loot it? Uh, we need to talk with Miles about this topic, by the way. <laughs> yes, because Miles is a level designer. And they are placing the loot. They are our buddies. Looking for a career chain? Join Netwatch. Tracking down Netwatch. Uh, uh, Netrun Renegades. Combating demons. Rebuilding the American Net. These are just some of the daily tasks entrusted to the special agents at Netwatch. Again, as you see, just a bit more uh, world building and so on. Uh, so that you as a player, you can be a bit more uh, engaged in that. Let's let's kick it off. So let's move on. Jeez, uh, uh, sorry, I'm running to the... <laughs> I started running to the, um, to the place instead of getting my car. Where the hell did I leave my car? No! Where's my car? It is here. Okay, let's go in. Is it, is it coincidence that the Netwatch advertisement is placed in each life path prog? I'm not sure if it is placed in each, but we have tried to uh, be consistent. That's true, actually. Um, okay, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Nope, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's... <laughs> this, I'm, I'm not seeing... Uh, I'm not seeing this as a... Yo! Yo, so how's 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 stuff, guys? You know, I uh, have hit uh, have hit one pole too much. God damn it, wasted. Okay, anyway, <laughs> do I have a right driver's license? I do, but um, unf unfortunately, I haven't been driving too much uh, recently, like at all. Um, so uh, you know, uh, let's uh, let's try to be careful now. So like, uh, like more careful than last time. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's let's move on. Okay, they're talking there, whatever. Let's go to telecom car. Did you guys did you guys try to destroy cactus by the way? That's it's one of my favorite things to do here always when I drive when I drive. Um I love this moment by the way on the um here on the on the Badlands. Huh. That that hasn't been that far, though. You know, let's go. This is so cool, by the way. I, I never have like time to just like sit down and just enjoy it and just look at it like this. Hmm, Villa Fort. Dude, somebody destroyed you. Okay, anyway, uh, <laughs> the other way. <laughs> You like uh, you love destroying the cactus, yeah? Exactly. Okay, let's move on. Open up. Yeah, again, you know, body presence and. Yep. 
<laughs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. Now, um, as, as you see, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a huge, like, a, a lot of, a lot of just the storytelling and so on. No, I'm going back. I'm, I'm going, actually, I'm going for following the, uh, following the thing. I just love it. Like, this dude, by the way, uh, he's just so cool. It, it's our, um, it's one of our comic book characters, kind of. Like, not comic book characters, sorry. It's, it's, our, it's our cartoon characters. So basically, you know, like, in, like, a world of cyberpunk, when we were working on the brands and so on, that was one of the dudes, like, we consciously created. You know, like, a dude who, who's, who's, um, head is made out of a, a you know glove that has been like blown up by somebody um like pumped up you know hmm. interesting hey they have a lot of cables here um okay let's move on climb the telecom tower and locate the control box okay let's go let's go let's go let's go hmm okay you know let's move on I'm moving forward so fast. Oh god. Sorry for jumping. Yeah. Hmm, taking photos. Interesting. So, do you guys think we should do it? <laughs> like, you know, I mean it is it is definitely like one of the cooler things to do of course you know i don't want to like spend too much time in it because it's just uh we will we will spend uh, just hours uh doing this um but i i just really uh enjoy uh i just really enjoy this uh mode sort of uh let's do let's go to oh uh, let's go to poses ha! you know look how badass our v is Let's go, let's go action. Okay. Cover shot. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> okay, that was kinda cool. But anyway, um I I think we'll uh I think we'll just move on uh with the with the game because you know the the narrative piece is the one that I'm the most interested on. Uh yeah, I, I do have a um um a, you know streaming mode turned on, so don't worry about it. <laughs> oh okay yeah that, that's that's an interesting piece actually you know because when we've been bu building it like would you want to do you want to show that the world is old and destroyed in a way and that's why you just don't open it normally it just actually breaks you know <laughs> don't you have to work tomorrow be i mean you know it's it's still not that late in poland come on i, I don't go to speed uh, um I don't go to sleep at that uh, at that time. <laughs> okay, let's connect to the station. I just love the cables, by the way. This was like one of the things that we did in the uh, at the early Hello? stages of working on the game to decide that we'll have a lot Come of cables. Ah, raised you finally. Willie McCoy, it's good to hear your voice. Fee. Wish I could say the same. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay. Okay, McCoy, tell me what's going on. Then why don't you? Why can't you? You abandoned the clan. I can't help you anymore. Never knew you to be so cautious. I tried loyal. Rules are rules. The system won't work without him. It can't. Nomads get the work in these parts because it's nomad turf. Would it be a problem if you're still a backer? You should have stuck with them. Joined up with the Snake Nation like the rest. Snake Nation can kiss my ass. Okay, V is not that nice though, as I thought. Um, you know what's cool? Like uh, the moment, the moment when we were here, there was like a car, you know, driving, uh, driving close by with like just you know lots of dust and so on. Like we did it intentionally, actually, to just give you the feeling when you're standing here, so that you can like look there and have that a bit more of a feeling of a you know being a nomad and like seeing somebody else as well. One last time. By the way, my nail One choice is yeah. perfect. I have to find the client with my payload, <laughs> but I, I don't know where he is. Hmm. Right place, right time. You were there? That cable is very wobbly, by the way. Um, my car broke down. My car gave out. The electric coupling, it's a miracle I made it here. Maybe the client left a message. 
Could you check for me? Hmm. Sure. Last time, though. I mean it. Client's name? Jackie Wells. Okay, yeah. Let's look for Jackie. Huh. Actually left a message. He's waiting on a farm. Flicking you the geolog data. Huh. Thanks, Willie. I owe you one. So Jackie turns to uh, turns Jackie wakes for don't wakes for us. Killed. Okay. Cool. And don't call again. By the way, I wanted to point out to something like just a small thing. You know, do you see the UI on that um, on that small uh, you know walkie-talkie that we are using? Uh, yeah, that's basically our UI team actually like preparing those things customly for us. Uh, our moderator today is their producer. Um, yeah, Ayanos, she is with us. And uh, yeah, she's actually producing these badasses that make all those amazing elements. Like actually UI has been really important for us in Cyberpunk because we are telling the story through the UI. And you will see so many times throughout the, um, the game when, it's, when UI is used as an element to tell you the story. And I will actually like many times point you out uh, that element, you know, uh, when there will be something coming up regarding this. Okay then, uh, cool. So we know, we, we know that we can go let's uh no i don't wanna I don't don't wanna break my neck going down because i already died in the stream like <laughs> literally literally in the first minute of the game um okay uh let's go let's go let's go return to the car <sighs> okay anyway sorry <laughs> love the atmosphere here Uh, you just say V not nice and uh, she wouldn't take nibbles if she wasn't nice. Yeah, yeah uh, I don't know if everybody knows who nibbles is so I won't spoil it, but uh, There it's a it's a special uh, companion person Okay, I need to be careful how I'm driving Jesus No, 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 no that car is just out like unhinged seriously. It's not me. It's the car like I assure you uh, like it's I have nothing to do with it anyway <laughs> Had to the meeting space, okay, by the way one cool thing that I like which uh, I think our um, Our vehicle team them did you know with the car is like the fact that you can change the camera right when when you uh, when you're like using those different presets This is so nice um, <laughs> Yeah, of course, it's the car <laughs> Yeah, I mean exactly like I, I'm not driving that often because I need to be alive uh, to make the game to make games, you know, so that's the reason, you know Hey Pavo, it's Adam Badowski. You can come later to work keep stream <laughs> Yeah, Banam is winding me up anyway uh, I mean, I mean it would be really cool if Adam would be here to be honest like um... <laughs> No, I'm not tear turning into full streamer, guys. I mean, um, I'm really crap in this, but I'm glad you, you know, you are enjoying it. That's the most important thing, you know. Um, really like uh, balance between V having a backstory and player agency. It's so deliberate. It was a lot of work actually to get it to that point, and I think. Um, this is one of the elements because I've been asked before, you know, about elements that I think we uh, like moving, uh, you know, forward, like to another things and so on. Like basically the conclusions we can take from the game is like one of the things that we learned is like how to do actually those things better. And I, I think that, you know, like whatever we'll be actually moving on forward with, we'll, we'll be able to do this better. We have learned so much like building this game. <laughs> you can't imagine. How much time do you spend to reading people's opinions, theories, watching fan arts? I mean, a lot, to be honest. Like, that's a, that's like a part of my work in a way, you know, because as a lead, I need to know what's going on. Like, you know, it's it's a like it's it's very important, you know, for you as a, a as a you know as a lead, I would say, but also as a designer to like strike this good balance. I'm switching to mouse and keyboard now, uh, to 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 strike this you know good balance between actually. You know reading others opinions and knowing what you want to do because it, it, it's an interesting point that we want to talk about very briefly um like when you are creating anything you need to have an idea what you want to do 
And I, I know that it sounds extremely trivial, but what I'm trying to say, you cannot just jump on a bandwagon and try to do whatever pe people want. Because if you do this, then you will dilute your vision and at the end of the day, you will actually do something completely different than you actually originally wanted. And it's you, it, it's your job as a creator to know actually what's my vision and to follow it and actually do the right thing. So even though sometimes, you know, you may hear opinions and so on to do certain things, sometimes it's simply not right. But in the same time, feedback is extremely important. Like to know basically what people like, you know, what was done well, what wasn't and so on. And yeah, I spent a ton of time actually checking those things. You know, I read, uh, you know, all the, you know, Reddit, uh, Reddit, uh, both low sodium and high sodium <laughs> Reddit. The, the high sodium uh, Reddit is, is, the, uh, is the one that I also write, uh, read a lot because, you know, it's good to be reminded uh, and be humble. You know, uh, there are things that we did well in this game. And I'm proud of, and there are things that we absolutely need to do better next time. And we will. And we will. Are there any Deus Ex Easter eggs? I didn't see any. I mean, uh, according to my knowledge, yes. But, I mean, I won't tell you <laughs> if you didn't see any. I can take credit, but I didn't know I was only person... Uh, sorry, there was a question in the chat about the... Um, uh, it's really cool to uh, have Nibbles in the game. I'm glad you like it. That's actually Nibbles is uh, Nibbles is is actually something I did uh, actually, uh, and in later stages also Ero, uh, one of our modders and designer, my team joined me in the endeavor to make Nibbles cool. Uh, what is the best place to make constructive feedback about the game? That's a really good question, actually. Like, to be completely honest, like when I tweet and ask about the uh, game and like feedback and stuff, I read all that. So if you want to like place any feedback, I actually think like under my tweets regarding the feedback place, this is a really good place. If you, of course, you know, have something as simple as bug, oh. it's always the best to just send it to our customer support. Uh, there was also tweets from our customer support official uh, page where you can check how to do so. So that, you know, and we are always checking those, right? But because like people send us ton of stuff and it's really, really useful. Anyway, let's talk about this bit uh, slightly more who came up with tears in the rain and the blade runner easter egg that was so awesome well that person is actually in the chat it was philip weber uh, who's on the chat with you but there was also other uh, uh, designers who of course contributed and helped him it was kuba Wichnowski who did the uh, location it was piotr Adamczyk who did the musical part so i think it was mostly um, and I think some of our um, lightning artists as well contributed to it. Uh, but yeah, mostly I think it was mostly Philip Kuba um, cooperating together to create this uh, piece. And I, I'm glad you liked it. You know, give uh, give give Philip uh, some of your love. Hello. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, uh, guys, I will start re stop reading chat for a moment, and I'll just go on, keep on playing. No, 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 I'm not taking piss, Jackie. That's all fine. Uh, I want to get a job. So, so first of all, like, one important thing, right? We didn't meet Jackie yet, right? So you walk in and he sits here just behind the corner. And you can see that he has sort of like a threatening pose, right? Because we want the player and... um. This is something actually that they talked about on uh, Digital Dragons at some point. You can also find my talk on YouTube regarding that specific topic. But um, what we are doing as a designers, we want to make you have a hypothesis. You have to, and, and you know, this is named in, in like completely different ways. It depends, you know, like uh, literature studies call it a hypothesis or interpretation hypothesis. What we want you to have is an interpretation hypothesis. So what do you think about Jackie right now? What are your thoughts? Okay, some dude that I heard about, uh, he's a kind of a threatening pose. He's kind of strong, you know, he looks like a big dude and he has a gun sitting there. And he has a pose that's owning the space, right? So we want you to build a hypothesis in your head and be like, okay, you know, what I know about this character, who he is actually, uh, you know, what are more my thoughts? And then throughout the scene that you experience in the moment, we want to confirm or deny that hypo hypothesis. And there's a very interesting think about that because if you deny the hypothesis of the player too often player will feel that lost and player will feel okay i have no idea what the fuck's going on in this game like 
I can't understand what's going on, you know? Uh, and, and some artistic games are, are I think, um, doing sometimes that mistakes, that they're maybe too outlandish for uh, their audience to understand really and, and have a grip, okay, what the hell is even going on? Uh, but in the same time, you don't want to confirm players' hypothesis too often because then players always know and then they will feel that the plot that you're experiencing is very simple and you can always guess it. You can always know how, what's going to happen. And you don't want that. So a good, a good mix in the story is like the moments when you are mixing up the hypothesis that you deny and that you confirm, basically. So let's see what happens. It's going to be a complicated question, but where the life path starting quest vastly different from what we have right now? Not really, not really, to be honest. Like uh, the life paths have uh, are right now the way they've been always designed, uh, the ways we um, we wanted to uh, to do them in the game. Um, they were supposed to give you like an introduction to the game and then a feeling that you have a certain character. But then as a, we wanted to give you as well an option to, to change, right? So as a player, when you started the Nomad playthrough and you were like, okay, I don't really like my Nomad, let's say, life paths, uh, like life path questions that I have. And I don't really feel like a role playing Nomad anymore. Uh, and I, let's say I don't really like, you know, being with Panam and, and hold that plotline. I actually prefer to go with Hanako and, and do all, all it like this and more go towards Corpo. Did, that's what we, we we wanted to give you, you know, the, the role playing capabilities. So answering your question briefly, they haven't been really that different, to be honest. Like we iterated them, but we iterate everything, right? Like you always start from a version that is like, you know, a, a sketch kind of something that we call a draft, and then you iterate on that to make it feel better and better and better and better. And, and what we end up with was something that all of us considered good enough you know something that we were like Hello. okay for our vision this works this fits this is what we feel will be um appreci appreciated by the players now it's a separate topic you know if that was enough or it wasn't right but that was not your question right because looking from the from the uh, looking right now at the thing you know looking at the players reception that's definitely something that i would discuss and, and uh, reconsider you know okay maybe there should it, it should look uh slightly different maybe this should be a bit more maybe this should be a bit different you know so um it's it's a long complex discussion to have uh but that was not your question Can you tell tell us about the saying behind Hanako's photo with her dad? Oh God, I, I, I would love to, but I actually don't have full information here. I will get it Hello. for you from Philip because I think he's the one that did so. Maybe actually Philip even can answer in the chat uh, if he knows. <laughs> There's a question, Pavel Focus, it's written in Polish. Pavel Focus, why Jackie? so fast I, i'm not saying what happened because of the spoiler um that it was a great character exactly that's the reason why you as a creator have to kill your great characters you know why george martin kills his characters because they're great you know Okay, uh, I'll move on. Um, I'll move on with. Okay, yeah, and there's the explanation from Philip on the chat. So if anybody's interested in that question, you can uh, you can read it. It's a really cool detail, though. That uh, what Philip just described. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, people people tell me like take it slow, but I think I'm taking it so slow uh, that it's probably like to to get it slower. It's just to to keep it as a screenshot, I think. So we'll slowly move on. Oh, and we also have Kaitek Kapuscinski on the on the chat. That's perfect. Kaitek is our lead cinematic designer. He is one of the brains behind our scenes. Uh, you know, along of course with a lot of people, but with Kaitek, I was cooperating very closely on our scene system. So give Kaitek some some love. Uh, Kayetan Kapuscinski, he's on the chat right now. Jesus, there, I think there's more reds actually than actual players right now on the chat. <laughs> so. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Let's let's move on. Let's let's do the let's do the scene. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for shout out for Kaitek. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Hello. Hello. Okay, Jackie. That's cool. 
I also love the way you know he follows me. Like when I look, when it, when I look at, at him. Uh, later then. <laughs> yeah, Jackie thought that I'm you know going going um, fuck out. Um, how how did how much influence did Mike Pondsmith have on direction of development? Well, I mean. Um, Mike Pondsmith has been our consultant, right? He has been in the talks with us about lots of different topics and elements, as I mentioned just before. Uh, designer in my team, Patrick Mills, our senior quest designer. Patrick was being in close Hello. contact with uh, with Mike, uh, discussing lots of different topics and so on. Let's so just make sure we get it right. Um, so, uh, m like, I, I, you know, I, I think that the way I would say it is like, like we had the control over the direction of what we are doing. Uh, because at the end of the day, like we are making the game and those are our choices. However, Mike was very important voice for us. And, you know, whatever he was saying was always taken into consideration in some form. So it, it all depends on the topic, you know. So I would probably be able to find all kinds of examples. Gonna be long. Uh, okay, guys, I need to move on because they're just the questions are getting longer and more. So it's just like, I, I feel it's more like an interview than me playing the game, to be honest. Um, let's go. Um, Okay, no, it won't, it won't be long, Jackie. Besides, like, Jesus, we are, we are like, 15 minutes to the chat, to the, to the streams end today. Uh, so I will slowly, like, start to wrap it up, I think, in a, way, in a moment. Uh, I will actually finish probably this conversation with Jackie and then um, move on to some questions. And then we'll probably wrap it up. Uh, I think that would be... Um, uh, that would be best. <laughs> oh god, I'm sorry, like, my friends are spamming me with, like, messages of people from Red, I mean. Uh, was it always intention to go open world? Uh, yes, absolutely, we never really consider linear narrative. No, uh, not at all. I, like, those are the kind of games we are doing, this is our DNA. Okay, guys, I'm really playing the game. Hello. Like, you can bother all other Reds with, um... Uh, with all with with the questions <laughs> just tag them basically in the stream uh, so that they can see your questions there's so many of them i think that probably any kind of question can be answered are you jackie well by the way are you well jackie seems you have cargo that needs to be moved oh where i'm from you share a bit about your soul before you talk biz eh? it's kind of like a custom or just good manners, you know? Huh. And this is a super cool thing. So, you know what Jackie just did? He basically set the boundaries. What he did, he was like, okay, where, where I come from, where I come from, you talk and share your soul before you the job. And then this, because of the fact that you come to the character and first thing he does, he sets up the boundary like this. We are as designers, as, as writers and so on of the game, we start drawing the picture. We start Hello. drawing a picture of that character, who that person is. And those defining moments, you know, like let's say the first impression, you know. So basically the hypothesis that we just had, um, you know, uh, when we saw the Jackie being kinda, kinda dangerous. Um, I would say it's kind of denied. He doesn't really look that dangerous, but he's still, you know, with the gun. We don't really know what he does, but he basically mentions that we need to share a bit more together. And you you start to think like, okay, what is actually, what the character is actually really about. Yeah, yeah, okay, Jackie is. Why don't we start with you then? NC native right here. Got Haywood in my blood. Mm. Never been to NC. That doesn't mean much to me. So... Imagine a place where everyone's like your bro or sis, or a distant cousin at least. I think I understand. You don't have to like each other, but it's family. That's Haywood. That and everyone's back in iron. And you? I guess you could say I'm from my own Haywood. You and me, we're gonna get along fine. The cargo. Huh. Now, this is a really cool part. Uh, I don't know if I'm, if I'm right, Kaitek, that you're the one that worked on this scene, by the way. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not sure no. if, if I'm right here, but I love this moment. So there are so many cool things in that scene, but one thing I wanted to point out to you. Look what Jackie did. Like He talked a bit and so on, set up the boundaries, set up like the stage and so on, and then he basically pushed the cargo towards us. And 
this is a, a really old trick in like gaming industry. The moments when we are showing like the characters' the impact on the world they are placed at, it makes them ingrained in the world more and feels more real. Like there's lots of like situations when you see games when when characters are barely like touching the world and like having any interactions with it uh, by themselves. And when they do that, you sort of like start doubting and you're like, okay, that world is not really real. Um, and and Jackie here when he pushes that cargo, you can feel okay, you know that that's physical, and there there was this visible weight actually that um, uh, that this uh, uh, that this cargo has. Jesus, there's so much conversations going on in the chat. I, I hope you guys are having fun because I I definitely am, but I just I keep, can't keep up uh, keep up reading. Oh, Ting uh, Tingilia cosplay. Uh, thank you, actually, for showing up. I, from what I remember, aren't you the one that won the uh, the the cosplay contest with amazing Dum Dum cosplay? Aren't you? Like I think you are. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> thank you for showing up. Uh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, there was a question when uh, we can expect more streams. I'm streaming every week uh, at 8 p.m. Uh, so we'll be moving on. And I hope we'll be moving on faster, Jesus, because this is terrible. Let's load it in the car. Oh, will. And then you can see Jackie like, just getting that thing, you know. And this is an amazing thing. I got held up. That our like cinematic director, uh, Sebastian Kalemba, is very often talking about, which is like showing the weight of an object and basically like how heavy and bulky it is. You could see like how Jackie like you know lifted the object and so on, and then you know like uh, took it and, and and carried it here, and basically it's supposed to just you know show the weight of the thing, of course. But that makes the the animation that makes it like actually feel more real. And you can see the staging, right? Um, in, in the scene, like Jackie walked off, right? He stand here. So what happens? He is naturally funneling me to this spot, right? He's not standing in a way that I think as a player that I should stay here, right? He's actually naturally funneling me to come over here. So okay, let's put the let's put the thing in the trunk. <laughs> what a fat ass. Yeah. Okay. And let's get into the car with Jackie. Um, yeah, well, we'll head out, like, kind of soon, Jackie. Uh, don't worry about it. Now, um... Hmm... So, guys, I think we will be slowly wrapping this up uh, because there's so much, uh, you know, going on. Um, and uh, I don't really uh, have enough, <laughs> enough uh, you know, time to actually keep on streaming. But uh, it, it was amazing, actually, uh, to be here. I will now switch to actually just complete, uh, you know, um, uh, mode where I can basically just answer your questions and uh, look at the chat and we'll just wrap it up like I hope in like 10 minutes or so um, so that you know we won't prolong this uh, much more um, so I'm just I'm just looking at your questions um, before you wrap um, Please open your graphic settings. Okay, well, well I, I can tweet it later uh, so that, you know, you, you can see it. Uh, yeah, I'm so, I mean, uh, th for, first of all, I'm glad that you guys came over. Uh, that's really amazing, uh, you know, because to be honest, you know, I'm not really a streamer, right? Like, it's just like I just put the camera together and just, you know, wanted to do it for you. Like my intention with this stream is to uh, talk to you about game development, talk to you about um, things I know uh some beats and pieces about, so like storytelling, psychology, um, acting, uh, uh, dancing, salsa, and bachata, <laughs> you know, stuff that stuff that you know is is in a way like somehow my 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 thing. Um, okay, um, I'm just looking at your questions. Uh, can we for next stream? Yes, we'll see each other in a week. Uh, so uh, I hope that. I hope to see at least some of you <laughs> that, that you know, next time, you know, I start streaming and everybody will be like, okay, it's just like uh, Pavo screenshot Sasko's incoming. He's going to talk half a stream about like one shot. <laughs> and it, it like, you know, uh, yeah. Um, 
Next time, would you consider Maelstrom face pain? Face, face pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. Like, actually, the the pickup and and the dum dum and so no, that's that's a character quest I worked on. So absolutely, I could just have the uh, you know the dum dum um, um, makeup. <laughs> the dog, I'm terrible. Um, yeah, the, there's a question about like creating additional uh, things for the game and so on. The chat's going really fast. Uh, just just few things. So when you're actually working for expansions, and I worked for expansions for two bigger IPs. One was Two Worlds Two that we may not have heard about. It was like I think uh, it was 10, 11 years ago. Um, we have done some expansions. Then I worked on uh, you know expansion and enhanced edition of The Witcher Two, and both expansions of The Witcher Three that I've been uh, leading uh, or, um, as a lead of the quest team. Of course, um, regarding like creating additional things for for every game that you're creating, it's really interesting thing because you have an access to like fully functional engine, access to actually tools that are strong, access to the team that knows basically how to make those things. Like so many things that have been like complex and difficult, and we had to like figure things out. Like you know, like the scenes that I. Uh, shown you like uh for instance like with um with um jackie and the car and the prop which was this huge um case that he's carrying those things were difficult to make to actually make it work so seamlessly as it is and not glitch and and just like nicely and move jackie like this and so on uh th th this didn't happen by itself it's actually like a lot of technical components that we had to put together so actually to be honest working on additional things for the game, if you are in a situation as a game dev that you're working on it, it's like a blessing, to be honest. Like, I don't know a single dev that doesn't like that. It's really awesome. Because it just, you can, you can do uh, stuff that you wanted to do, and in the same time, you have all the knowledge, right? It's just like, you know, you know how it feels? It feels like writing the same time, maybe again, you know, the same book in a way, or like, you know, taking all the experience that you have and writing another chapter. It's just so amazing. And it's it's a great feeling. So working on expansions is really cool. And, and very enjoyable, stressless, you know, not stressful, basically, experience. Uh, Dance 2077 take place in the same timeline as book Cyberpunk Red. That's correct. Uh, we have been in constant contact with our Talsorian games, uh, with, with, not our Talsorian games, with Talsorian games that are uh, basically the developers and publishers of uh, Cyberpunk Red. And uh, we try to pay attention to all the small, uh, small things. Who created the Prophet Gary quest? Uh, well, that's that's a quest from uh, my uh, the designer in my uh, team, and um, that's a quest done by Moritz. Uh, Moritz is uh, uh, he he did like really cool stuff in this game, including the Delamain quest and so on. So, yes. Uh, did you meet these male voice actors? Uh, did you meet these voice actors? I met the Polish ones. Correct. Yes, I, I met the Polish voice actors. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you for saying it was a fun stream. I, I'm, I'm glad. I guess it was. Uh, you know, I'm uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an absolute noob uh, when it comes to this. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, guys, if you have like some additional questions and so on, just please uh, tweet, post it on my Twitter under the uh, tweet about the um, uh, stream, okay? And I'll just take a look, like, because some of your questions, I imagine, were probably like, I would just have to write a book about it, uh, you know, to answer it well. Um, so, yeah. So just please, like, if you have any questions or something comes to mind, just just please tweet it there. Uh, it will be easy. It's just under my tweet, okay? Because I need to, uh, you know, uh, I I have to have majority of my notifications muted because my phone would die. So that's why I just always check under my tweet what I have uh, there and and try to go over and and check it. Okay then. Um, yeah. And um, I'm, guys, uh, once again, I wanted to do the shout out for our amazing moderators. So Lilaya. Um, 
uh, who uh, is streaming our, you know, who is streaming World of Warcraft. You can check her on my recommended streamers uh, as well. Uh, you can also check um, uh, the uh, our producer for the UI team. Um, um, she is streaming uh, the um, uh, Destiny 2. Uh, also has her channel. It's also pretty fun to hang out there. Uh, there is also, of course, Alicia. She is streaming Gwent and the, 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 those are our community managers uh, so please just yeah exactly show that shout out to Alicia uh, because they they were amazing and of course uh, of course uh, Repek who was helping here um, and I think uh, also uh, you know everybody that joined especially <laughs> I, yeah exactly I know just just messaged <laughs> with her icons on the uh, on the chat okay one thing I wanted to mention though um, uh, thank you for all the reds though that came over here and wanted to participate and actually do this, uh, I really think that we can really do something amazing together. And to be honest, like, you know, if you guys, if you guys enjoy this, then, you know, I'm, I'm all, all for doing it, you know, over and over. So just please, uh, you know, feel free to come. So thank you for all, uh, and especially the red team, you know, the dev team, uh, the developers that came over here. You know, I know that I'm the one who's speaking, but please be like, I want to put so much emphasis on the work the theme is doing um yeah uh the the uh the team is doing and so on and thank you as well for my for my girlfriend uh who just messaged in the chat she's also our moderator today <laughs> she she just uh she just thanked for everybody from the red 10 out of 10 okay that's very um that's very um i'm very grateful for the score i was i was hoping that it will be like you know around 10, 2 out of 10 so um you know <laughs> that will get it at least to that point <laughs> yeah okay then uh guys you are uh, you are you're great and, and thank you for uh thank you for being here uh i will now uh save the game to just make sure that we can actually continue you know uh and i will leave you with a bit of the um music here uh for for a few moments but then we'll be wrapping this up uh it was awesome so Thank you all, and thank you to the mods, and thank you to all the rats that have been here. And see you next week at the same time, 8 p.m. Uh, we are seeing each other, hopefully for much longer stream, when there will be like much more cool stuff going on. Bye!